As almost the only independent African ruler after the war, Haile Selassie provided a symbol of self-respect for black men just emerging from white rule. The wind of change had come to Africa. Greetings, all you very rare individuals. Welcome to another Africa podcast. This is episode 27. We're going to talk about why Africa is great. Specifically, we're going to talk about one of the most powerful emperors and respected men in the 20th century, Your Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I, member of the Solomonic Dynasty, whose ancestry could be traced all the way back to King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. And his main objective was to modernize Ethiopia and for other nations to respect and value Africa as we are a great nation. He has many names also. He's called the conquering line of Judah, King of Kings, God elect. There's so many names he has. But my favorite one is Haile Selassie's meaning, which means the mighty Trinity, which is so incredible and just a testament to who he is and what's running through his veins. As the story goes back to how King Solomon and Queen of Sheba met and they had a child called Menelik the first, who is the first emperor of Ethiopia. And because Jesus Christ also came for that same lineage, and so did King David, that's why they're called the Lion of Judah. And that's why they believe that Haile Selassie and many of the emperors of Ethiopia have actually came down from a powerful lineage and ancestry. But what I found really cool about Haile Selassie is that he really wanted Africa to unite, which is what Bob Marley spoke about a lot. But he had a vision for Africa and that it could also be great and powerful, like the Western countries, as his main goal was to fervently modernize Ethiopia. And he did that really well as he was going around the countries and different continents, really speaking to the leaders in order to gain connections and to build alliances. He even joined the League of Nations and was featured on Time magazine as well. So for an African emperor, he was out there, you know, he didn't just stay in his own country. Recognizing the emperor's unique position, the United Nations chose Addis Ababa as its African headquarters. And he really loved Africa. You know, he loved his people and he gave his whole life just to make his country great and to keep out traditions and even broke away from some conventional thinking as many didn't really want Ethiopia to be modernized but Tyler Selassie decided to push it forward and this really made him respected and revered around the world reigning monarch um, similar to Queen Elizabeth II right now at the time in the 20th century and his great skill of delegation and his strong presence as well definitely drew people towards him and his efforts to modernize Ethiopia was well received as he set up the African Union in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia and many modern buildings were crafted in Addis Ababa and he made Ethiopia literally the hub for foreign discussion and he really did well for his country he loved being an African which is really inspiring to me and definitely was revered as seen here, Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip were bound to him. Some say that picture is fake, but I don't believe it, as they are in his own country, so they should bow before him, similar to how he would bow if he was in England to see Queen Elizabeth. But you can clearly see that Africa isn't just a poor country, which has nothing. He has great gold, great things, and 
it's amazing you know and for an african king to be so respected that mao zedong would even meet him and the emperor of japan as well would also meet him and so was franklin d roosevelt he's met great people like winston churchill and you can tell that they see him in similitude an african emperor and richard nixon as well was one of them and he was definitely respected and helped bring together the African leaders as seen in this picture. And he really put his efforts and all his energy to really unite Africa. And when I was really looking into Haile Selassie, I couldn't help but feel some sort of proudness to be African. There's just something about an African king garnering so much respect around the world that really destroyed and distorted the view that I had growing up of Africans as I always heard about Africans being slaves and you know being barbaric and savages but when you see a man in a suit well dressed sophisticated well-mannered it changes your view completely and makes you realize that the view that the world tries to push on africa isn't true as you know even in the 1960s he met with john f kennedy who was a very very rich man and he was well respected and celebrated when he came over to America for the state visit. They got along very well and Haile Selassie took a liking to John F. Kennedy as he was for civil rights during the time when Martin Luther was protesting for desegregation. And during the state visit, many were clapping and applauding Haile Selassie, an African king, an African emperor. Which is something that's not really shown in the news today. When was the last time you see an African leader being praised and revered? And I believe it's a real shame that in 1974 he was removed. Because he was really one of the last symbols in Africa of independence, power, history, culture value and when he was taken away I believe that that was the day when Africa really started to decline now some may disagree with me but the ones who took over didn't even last 20 years so I believe that as an African you must look at somebody like Haile Selassie and realize that you're great you're not small, you're not nothing, you're actually great. Not only that, Ethiopia was one of the only countries in Africa to actually not be colonized. They defeated Italy twice, and the second time, some might say they didn't defeat them, but they got their country back, so they, in turn, they won. But I believe that somebody like him is an example of a great African and we need to see that and emulate that to be great Afro-Scots. People who see this throughout the world will realize that even in the 20th century with face, courage and a just cause, David will still beat Goliath.